There was a request here I thought was pretty good. Uh, here is why we are concerned. Here we see here. I'd like to share with you our concern about feeding our babies vegan diets. I know the last four years are very important for the development of the first four years are very important for the development of the brain and the body. <clears throat> they need high intake of protein, fat, and calcium. Wrong. 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 When you feed babies high protein, high fats, it has some serious problems with your babies. You create acidosis and some milks ketosis. You have to be careful. And now with the young babies more compromised in their hepatic, liver, gallbladder areas and in their pancreatic areas, they can't even tolerate mother's milk. Now, protein doesn't develop the brain. I don't know what people are thinking. Amino acids are essential in, in the development of cells and things like that to a certain extent. Most of them are carriers. So the real need of any homo sapien and actually any vertebrae on this planet is carbon. Like it or not. And carbon is sugar. Galactose in milk fructose in fruits, and glucose in veggies. All right? You first must understand as a mother and a father what species the Homo sapien belongs to if you want to get right on point and understand how to feed them. Because if you feed them high proteins, you're feeding them way out of what you should. And this will only create more kidney damage, more hepatic and GI tract damage in these babies. You can't do it. High fat. Mama's, human mama's milk is not high fat, high protein. Cow's milk is. Look at the difference in the rate of growth and the different species. You're comparing a homo sapien baby to a calf, a baby calf. Different species, different rate of size at birth, and different growth factors. You feed babies cow's milk and you might as well just sit there and clog their lymph systems and with the day's problems in the baby's adrenals and kidneys, you're going to run the risk of giving tumors and getting your baby cancer doing these things. And then you're back there at the uh, St. Jude's place. You want healthy babies. You want raw food babies. Where would you think in one minute that cooking food or grains or meats are superior foods than fruits and vegetables. That would be ridiculous thinking. The food that houses the most nutrition for the human is your fruits and berries. Fruits picked ripe, grown properly. I mean, we have to state that because some people think immediately, you know, gro grocery store food. It's enough to say that your fruits and berries are king. You want to now let's look at clinically. Clinically, I've got an MS case here. Or clinically, I have a Lou Gehrig's, Parkinson's, even a spinal cord injury here. What am I going to feed them to get them well? How am I going to get an MS patient that's got brain lesions? They're down in a chair. How do I get them well? if all this protein and fat is important for health. And not just of the, the first few weeks of a baby's growth. <laughs> that is vital. But in the first few weeks, your milk has a little more lipids to it. But lipids are of the lymphatic system and of the adrenal glands. You have to allow some understanding that the human body knows what it's doing with the nutrition that you're feeding it. Understanding the nutrition, if you think you feed your babies different than the adults, you're mistaken. These are little homo sapiens. To develop a baby's neurological system and brain, you have to have high fruits and high berries. You don't do that and you don't develop neurologically. Look at all the cases we've had where we put them on the fruits and the berries for different reasons, cancers or whatever, and they soared academically. Those youngsters that go on fruit soar academically, soar in comprehension levels. 
beyond what people think. It's your your high protein fat babies that are like this all the time, colicky, always always neurologically jittery, never never peaceful and quiet. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for health. There's health in a baby. Why would you ever feed any, any animal, any human, anything cooked? And nature does not dictate high protein diets to any creature except for those large, large, large babies called the herbivores. And most of those are concentrated amino acids, not even the level that they create the meat from. So you, 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 know, you have to get back to realize that your baby is just like you and you get your baby well just like you. I have had hundreds of babies and we have gotten tons of them well away from cancers, at least what medical doctors call cancers. We've done a tremendous amount of work. Some though have come to us in advanced stages. We couldn't even save them brings a tear to your eye when you understand why they were put on high protein and high fat diets. Let me tell you, I could turn you on to some mothers that would make your ears burn and your eyes cry because they were on high protein, high fat diets and the medical doctors killed them. You can't do that and you don't want to believe in that. If you believe in that, feed your child that. But let me tell you, you won't have a healthy baby. And you can't afford your parents to have unhealthy children in a world that's gone insane medically in every other way. Take a look at the old bits at the children dying. Back in the 90s, I didn't even see that, that amount of children dying. In the 90s, that was only a few years ago. Now we have massive amounts of children dying from cancers, well, the treatment of cancers anyway. So you want a healthy babies. I've got an infant formula coming out and it's good, but I'm trying to cut it down. It is too strong. Too much nutrition can have the reverse effect is not enough. But you have to consider the same thing in your babies, guys. They are a blueprint of you. They're a blueprint of the mom, they're a blueprint of the dad, and generally grandma and grandpa both sides to some degree. So you have to be careful that you have to look at that. And babies are not above taking herbs either. We have plenty of herb babies on herbs. So don't be afraid because you're dealing with a little human as opposed to a big human and want to feed them. We're all the same species. There are some babies now that can't even tolerate mother's milk and you're seeing that more and more and more. What do we do? We go to the coconut milk, so we go to the coconut waters and we go to the fruit juices. My grandson, almost exclusively fruititarian, has been since birth with coconut water and coconut milks. Guy's a little major powerhouse. Just, there's no fat on him. The guy's twice as big as any kid his age, and he's, he's stronger. I mean, it's, he's hard to control. That's some of the problems. You know, you're going to have children smarter quicker. I took a two-year-old one time, this was a biker's son, I think I told you about this in one of the videos, but the biker was very violent at first. He was president of the Outlaws of Ohio one time. To show you how bad this guy was, he walked into a Hell's Angel bar, they beat the holy crap out of him, put him in the hospital, when he got out he walked right back in. That's how, that's how he was. He always put a shotgun up to his wife's face. So when I got him in here, I got him on raw, and he had big, big cysts and sores everywhere, major cirrhosis of the liver. I turned that big gut, I turned that biker guy totally around, out of body traveler, and AA, I got him much more opened up, very peaceful. And so his son had picked up, was only two years old, and was trying to break the cat's and dog's legs, had picked up this violence. So we detoxed this little two-year-old. At all two years, when you're young like that, in the infant stages, you, you like high fevers. 104, 105 is very common fevers for a child. 
And as long as you keep them cold and try to keep cold in the back of the neck and maybe on the head and, and cool them down to 103, that's fine. But this child, we, we let him run 104, 105, kept him cool, you know, as much as possible, but your body runs that. As long as you must always remember hydration. Acids dehydrate, and you see that in every walk of life in that way. I can't remember, about the fifth day it seems like, he started taking loose with black crap coming out of his bowel. This is a little two-year-old. How did he develop so much of this black necrotic stuff at two? And he threw a little of it up. After that, it was unbelievable. This kid had opened up the refrigerator, get him a carrot, get him veggies or fruits. He didn't want anything else. When he was a freshman in high school, he created so much problems with the teacher because he was so aware that when she would say something, he would see all the things involved in it and either the, the reason that wasn't true or something else about it, and that was real hard for the teacher to take. And it's going to get that way with all you raw food parents. You're really going to see your children excel at comprehension levels and awareness levels in school. And this kid was doing college courses in his freshman year. I'm telling you, this, this is just, you, you don't fear the living. Don't fear the raw. Who cares what people say out there? No one really knows because no one goes raw. Those that parents that have gone raw and that their babies have gone raw have found fantastic results. You have to realize the weaknesses and the genetics in the children, and you're after that. You're after that child like you're after yourself. We don't just eat fruits to detox. Water fasting is detox. I just put you on a diet your body's designed to eat. Your body does its own detox because you've given it the chemistry and energy to clean itself out. Normally, when you eat that way, you would be clean because fruits and vegetables, raw, and berries are self-cleansers. They clean as you use the chemistry. How beautiful is that as a creator to make your food self-cleaning? Cleans your teeth, cleans your bowels, cleans your kidneys. You don't have toxic residues. So what would we want to feed our babies? Grains? You know, what's healthy about grains? Poly, or dye, which is many, or two or more, or poly, many, saccharides. So what you're doing is you're giving a complex starch, a dead food, nothing healthy there. I don't care if it's a whole grain. So that, there's nothing there to feed a child. Let me see what else. Uh, meats and a baby? That'd be insane. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, beans. Uh, no, no, got you on that one. That's not good. A high protein, high phytic acid, enzyme inhibitors inhibit the baby's digestive system. High sulfur, gassy, farty stuff. Now, let's see, what else would you want to feed your babies? You see where I'm going with this? Your babies need to eat the same way you do, except younger. And even though you hear they need to be breastfeeding for two years by the allopathic community, bull crap. You breastfeed them too long and you'll start feeding them full of mucus. And mucus in, mucus out. No one likes a cold and flu like that. I'm going through it myself now. No one likes to do that. I enjoy the after effect because you feel so clean and nice. But at one time or another, you put it in there. So you just have to realize that feeding your baby healthy is vital and raw is always healthy. There's a raw food pediatrician. You could probably Google him. I don't know the name, but he's a raw food pediatrician in Miami. And uh, you might you know, try to seek more advice from a raw food pediatrician if you like. But we have a ton of babies we've worked on since <clears throat> I was a naturopath. He had infants when I first started seeing people back in the early 70s. So um, I worked on babies when I had health food stores before that. So you know, shouldn't worry about babies in that way. If you worry about anything on a baby, you worry about feeding them the wrong things, which is going to be your grains, your, your, your high proteins. You don't want to do that to a baby. Uh-uh. Or you're going to regret it. I don't know what else to say about it. Now, Mamas that are pregnant, highly recommend superfood blends. 
I highly recommend our superfood blend too because very, very high in calcium. It's not how much calcium is in something, though. You got to understand some things here. It, it isn't more is better, guys. It's do you digest? Do you absorb? Do you utilize, which is your hormones and steroids? And do you eliminate the byproducts from all that chemistry being metabolized and utilized by the body? Those four phases are essential in infants as well as the elderly. It doesn't matter. These four phases are key. And babies in today's world have compromised on all those levels, and particularly the neurological level from the adrenals. So, a little thimerosal, a little mercury, and you're going to have seizures, and you're going to have ADD or ADHD, you're going to have all of that. And it's only because they're already coming in here compromised. Had they not, somebody could handle a little aluminum, I guess, a little mercury, and stuff like that. But not, no metals that build up in the body is beneficial. But according to some medical doctors, detox is ridiculous, so I guess you just keep them in your body for life, huh? <laughs> but pregnant mothers, you have to look at yourself, ladies, because there are some things you can continue to do if you're not filtering in the kidneys. I would definitely take an adrenal formula and the kidney formula. It can only help your baby. Uh, make sure your parathyroid is up there because your baby is going to be sucking on your calcium and you want to make sure that uh, you're utilizing calcium properly so the baby can utilize calcium properly because if your th parathyroid's down, so is the baby's. More than likely, unless dad or someone else pull them, and they're going to have problems with, with calcium, which is growth and everything else. So, uh, you really want to look at your, your, yourselves and, and determine your weaknesses. And I have to say, if you have a chance or time before you conceive, you definitely want to clean yourself out, particularly the mothers, because your baby is living in you for eight, nine months, and um, their lymph systems are your lymph systems. Their blood flow is your blood flow. So, you have to be real careful, you know, that your lymph system is clean because this is what we see every day in here, and we're always comparing eyes to parents and children and everything else, because everybody wants to look and know, and which you should, and uh, then you get to see it. I appreciate the questions, because it's vital that mothers ask these questions of how to raise healthy children, because healthy children are the future. We have a ton of sick babies, and it's sad to see parents who just want to have children to to raise and good good babies and they have really sickly children it's sad stuff remember i told you this one case i have where this young man didn't get full growth of gray matter and we looked in the dad's eyes and found in that area a large lacunas and so his dad was so weak in those tissues that the baby could not get growth factors going enough to grow that tissue. How interesting. Very interesting. So there's a lot that we're learning as we're watching these eyes and watching babies and watching people and, and their parents and all that, for sure. But don't be fooled and don't be scared. The banana is nature's perfect food. And this comes from a three doctor professor. I have a friend that's a three doctor professor in Canada and he has studied fruits all his life. So if you have to believe in somebody, you have to believe in at least someone that has three doctors that made a life study of, of the chemistry of foods. And uh, I respect his opinion, and it's right along our opinion, is that raw living foods, and especially the fruits, and especially the berries and, and the bananas are nature's perfect foods. So your children should enjoy those things. Islanders were raised exclusively on fruits, have longevity way beyond us. We see this all the time in here. We see 90 and 100 year olds come in our clinic because we use herbs and, and Islanders love herbs, thank God. And, and, and I ask them how they get so old, looking so good, and it's always the same. I was raised on a fruit diet. So don't ever think for a minute that fruits in some way are making you deficient when in fact it's the only way you can heal and, and rebuild yourselves especially neurologically. 
You can't rebuild yourself neurologically with vegetables. We've demonstrated that time and time and time again. So what does that have to say about baby's development of brain and nerve if it's that only level you can cure it with? You see where I'm going with that? So don't fear nothing. Fear anything. You fear man's thinking and man's concepts, not nature's, man's concepts because they're, they're based upon conditioned thinking. Dairyman's Association and Cattleman's Association, you got all kinds of associations, a little slick white milk ring around them, the uh, mustache uh, syndrome. You've got all these type of slick little advertisements to try to convince you that, that these foods are good for you. Of course, now the studies, finally somebody's putting out some truthful studies showing that the more milk you drink, the more prone to fracture. So you want to give your babies milk? Do you want to get a living being something cooked to death? so chemically altered that it resembles plastic? I don't think so. Now breastfeeding, the problem with breastfeeding with mothers is their own internal condition, their own acidosis and their own toxemia. And this oftentimes, it, it, it doesn't rub with the babies well because they also have your level of toxemia and, and, and a little deeper genetic weaknesses. So they don't do well. So we're seeing a lot of even raw food parents who haven't got their bodies totally healthy, some of the babies now are rejecting mother's milk. You know, I had three medical doctors one time from the Honduras come in here. And they were telling me that this group CARES, and I used to donate, I don't anymore. This group called CARES went down to the Honduras and was trying to convince the native women to start drinking cow's pasteurized milk and start feeding their babies pasteurized milk instead of breastfeeding. These were three medical doctors from the Honduras. And they were bitching up a storm at how many lymphatic problems, how many what they call colds and flus and all the other problems they were having because of that. So here's a group that people are donating large sums of money to that are going down trying to convince people that are already doing the right thing that they're doing the wrong thing and that they need to, to, they need to, to do the, the toxic stuff. What gives them the right to even think that when they have no found research or any evidence to prove that pasteurized milk is even good for you, period? You got to start thinking like species. You want to feed your baby's milk and they don't go mother's milk? Find a monkey, find a chimpanzee and good luck. So we've had babies go right on fruits within the, the first few weeks that couldn't tolerate any dairy products and they did real well. So all I can tell you is that your fruit juices and then you get into your, as they, as they start maturing, you get into your apple sauces, use a little cinnamon if they have digestive problems in there and you start working your babies in, up into that area. These are easy to digest foods. Just because the, I don't know where people are getting their information that they need to eat, feed their babies things that, that make everyone else sick. The reason man has these problems is the high protein diets, the high lipid diets, the grains, you know, the polys, the high concentrated amino acids, the high concentrated lipids. None of those are good for anybody. They're not good for animals. Animals get sick feeding them those foods. Omnivores get sick, herbivores get sick, foodivores get sick, and cats don't make it at all. So you can't do it. You see where we're going with all this? The same thing we're going on this whole site, excuse me, about health. Raising your babies healthy is raising your babies raw. Now, your babies might be going through some ups and downs doing that too. And I don't know what to tell you. I've learned a lot through the years of detoxing children. We detoxified one mother so rapidly her baby was breastfeeding and the baby skin started going coming off and, and new skin was developing that was ten times prettier and nicer. It was unbelievable. It was unbelievable how nature gets rid of the weaknesses and replaces it with the strength. And you must remember that each and every one of you in the level of detoxification that you're at. If you've got weaknesses that you don't want to break down too quick, 
slow way down on your detox. Like you're talking to the gentleman that competes for Miss Olymp Mr. Olympia. You got to get away from the proteins to break down your kidneys or RA is coming. But you can pump high amino acids in green drinks and probably stay. You'll get stronger muscles. But if you you can't you can't detox too fast if you're if you're competing for for muscle look. If you're a runner or any other athlete, you want to be raw, baby, and you want to dig in, get your kidneys filtering, get all these obstructions to the flow of energy out of your tissues, and you want endurance. You don't want to get tired. Um, you, you, you just can't believe where you can go. You just can't believe where you can go. But you can't look like you're some puffed up, high protein, you know, guy. When to some it might look good, but boy, the price one pays is horrendous. Horrendous. If this friend of mine ever comes in here, he had he was competed for Mr. Olympia a couple of times. He has huge 27, 28 inch arms, huge, huge chest. Featured on magazines. Poor guy came in with his elbows distended, his his wrist distended. Sad stuff. Just just sad stuff. What he what he of course RA, but just sad stuff, you know, just losing everything. And it's just there's some things just not worth it. You just have to balance and meter and be careful, guys, that you don't hurt yourselves. Because your body is how you have fun here. And if your body isn't having fun and breaking down, certainly, unless you're an out-of-body traveler, consciously, you're not going to have fun either. And the same thing with your babies too, ladies. Don't ever be afraid to feed your babies living foods. And there's so many superfoods. The problem you have to concern yourself with is overnutrition. Overnutrition. Because you compromise digestive system with too much. Balance is always the key. And sometimes you can't say what that is when it comes to infants. You have to trust intuitiveness of infants to stop when it's time to stop. Pregnant women, uh, I'm real cautious about detoxifying. You can go in and build your glands up. You can go fix your kidneys. The only herbs I'm I'm concerned with with um, with pregnant women are the lymphatic herbs. Probably a little unjustly because some women that are pregnant are on the herbs, the lymphatic herbs. But I'm just a little careful, especially for the few first few trimesters because weak fetuses are aborted by the body. No question about it. But particularly if your estrogen levels are all out of balance and you're estrogen dominant, chances of holding children are, are, are not good. That's why you're always good to get your pituitary, your female organs uh, toned and healthy before you conceive. So it just makes common sense. But some people can't, you know, can't wait or too late or whoops, that sort of thing. But um, use that superfood blend for, for uh, pregnancy because it's just major, major, major. But look at your glands because if your glands are down, so is the baby's glands. And that's not good. We're in a world of where everybody's crashing. All the bodies are crashing. So except for you raw foodists, you know, you, you, th there's no way on any level that you can consider cooking food makes it better for you. None. Because the food you have to cook the holy heck out of, like beans and things, they're not good cooked or raw. So, anyway, I hope that's enough. Because I did want to get to some other questions, and I, I just am kind of in a hurry. I want to get as much of this answered as I can for you. So I hope that's enough. But please, ladies, don't ever be afraid to raise your babies raw. Are you kidding? You'll have the superior babies on the planet. Just like all the raw foodists. They're getting their, themselves to Wellville. But it's not just being a raw foodist. We're taking you deeper into the understanding of genetics and what people's lymph systems looks like from all the past generations. And it isn't pretty. So there's a lot of fixing to do. So you just can't worry about that. You just have to get in and fix your bodies, make your children healthy. But you don't feed them the same thing that got humans sick. The milks, the meats, this is what all got humans sick. The grains. There's nothing healthy about any of these things. 
They're all out of chemical balance to what nature produces and they're mostly man grown. Not nature produced, man produced. Nature produces living things, fruits, veggies, greens, that sort of thing, period. Man's the one that's cultivating and, and, and uh, hybriding and creating these, some of these things. Didn't say it was good for you. So we put a lot of faith in rice and starches. Wrong. Pyramid greenhouses and living foods, much better.